We thought it was Biddle or Slappy, but it was you all along? It was me all along. Big swings taken in these last few episodes. Did it pay off? And overall, was Goosebumps 2023 worth it? This show was a roller coaster ride from start to finish. Where I last left you after episode 6, I was firmly on the side of enjoying this interpretation. It was a big departure from the classic stories and format, but I thought it tied in the legacy of the brand well with mostly interesting new characters and an intriguing mystery. Not everything worked, but it was good enough to have fun with. After finishing the 10 episode first season, I'm not nearly as enthusiastic. Spoilers ahead for everything up through the finale. So, I have a few guesses why they did this, but the season seemed to wrap up its story in episode 8 and spend the last two installments giving us somewhat of a taste of how the show could continue into a second season. Then it ends on a total cliffhanger, which I really thought was unnecessary. Let's talk about what worked through the season's natural conclusion in episode 8. The background with Slappy and Harold was fleshed out along with introducing concepts that weren't wholly original but fit in great with the vibe of the series. I thought everyone being trapped in Harold's book was a solid way to keep them occupied while learning more about each other and discovering Nathan's consciousness within a representation of Harold's home. We even see the souls of Harold's parents trapped in a lower level of that realm. The gimmick of pain suddenly giving Mr. Brat control of his body again made for some comedic and compelling moments. Justin Long shines in those scenes where he's fighting himself and keeping the tension believable. Eventually, the kids escape and the whole thing climaxes in a chase with Lucas's mom carrying Slappy through the mountains while being chased by the possessed Nathan. He hurts his leg at one point, which I'm guessing was supposed to be an homage to Jack Torrance from The Shining. Lucas and Margo are close behind as the other kids eventually join them in the hunt. They all meet on a cliff with a huge fall steps away. Isaiah dangles off the ledge with Harold and Slappy about to send him to his doom. The others mention Harold's parents, and this begins a fight for the ghost boy's soul. Slappy drags him toward the darkness as the rest of the characters pull him to the light. Good wins out as Harold helps Isaiah off the ledge and chucks the screaming dummy into the snow-covered forest below. Harold leaves Nathan's body and takes the form of his true self, seemingly forgiving the older generation for accidentally causing the events that led to his death. A vision of the Biddles appear, and the family of three peacefully fade off into the unknown together. Everything seems wrapped up when we see Slappy's mangled body, his eyes snapping open. This is followed by a teaser of what's to come in the last two episodes. I thought this was a weird choice after the logical ending they just had. Slappy's eyes opening could have easily just been a little hook for season 2, but the show wasn't done. Since I mostly liked what we got throughout, I gave them the benefit of the doubt to see where this was all going. The results were a mixed bag at best. Episode 9 picks up with everyone in Port Lawrence finally getting on with their lives. Nathan writes his experience as a story that gets the attention of a book publisher. There's just one caveat. They want him to change the ending. After racking his brain for days, he can't come up with anything worthwhile, and not wanting to waste his one chance at his dream, he goes back to the mountains, finds Slappy's broken pieces, brings him back to his house, and recites the curse so the dummy can come back to life and give him a better ending for his story. I'm sorry. What? The guy who was arguably harmed the most by all the events of the show. The same man who was possessed and trapped inside some evil ethereal plane. The exact same character who saw how his relative fell under Slappy's influence and became a vengeful monster who killed his own parents. That guy wants to bring back the spirit that caused all this because he wants to finish writing a book? No. No, 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 no. I don't care how much they try to rationalize it in flashbacks and or showing how everyone was sort of ignoring him after they won the day. There's no way this dude would just waltz back out there and retrieve that dummy. Maybe if he was haunted by Slappy's voice or if something somewhat out of his control forced him to do so, but no, it's portrayed as purely a selfish act. Brat calls himself a coward later in the finale, yet a coward would at least have enough self-preservation to stay away from the evil puppet. Nathan then goes further than Harold or Ephraim ever did. He digs up that coffin and recites another spell that unites Slappy's soul to the body therein, 
fully resurrecting Kandu. Sidebar, how exactly is Nathan related to Harold and the whole Biddle Brat Mahar family? They maintained he was a descendant of Ephraim, but does that actually make sense? It would be Franz, Ephraim, Ephraim's baby with his wife, Harold's mother, then Harold. I guess Harold's mother could have had a brother and Nathan comes from that line? I don't know. They play it up like there's only one offspring each generation, but that can't be true if Nathan is about the same age as Harold. They'd have to be cousins, right? Maybe I missed a detail. Let me know if anyone out there has figured that one out. Regardless, Mr. Bratt's arc throughout most of the show is pretty pointless when he was going to make all those decisions on his own anyway. We didn't really need Bill at all for this stuff to take place. Nathan foolishly dooms the town of his own volition. I do really like Harold's story, though. At the very least, they should have waited for a second season to regress Nathan. Odd choices. The finale goes in depth about the released magician's backstory. I'm not a magician. A magician is someone who stands on a corner and tricks people for money. I am real. Okay, the evil wizard's backstory. I know Kandu is from a more recent Goosebumps book, so I'm sure super hardcore fans recognize the name, but I didn't read that book, so any character recognition was lost on me. In the finale, we get his entire villain origin story as a soldier in the British military who's blasted into a hidden cave with ancient writings on the walls. He reads a phrase that heals him of a mortal gunshot wound and takes his new name from part of that spell. In 1885, he meets Nathan's great-great-grandfather, Franz Mahar, at his failing carnival and begins helping him with his business in exchange for performing a ritual. Kandu changes people into dummies who he controls in order to sacrifice 1,000 souls. These sacrifices will resurrect horrors of ancient times, including curses and monsters, which he claims will save the world by showing humans that there is more to be afraid of than each other. Man was never meant to be a monster and in their absence, humanity became that evil. Kandu actually thinks he's performing some kind of greater good with these vile acts. It's a lot to take in, and with just 40 minutes to tell that whole story, I feel like there was plenty more that could have been mined from it. We see the kids return to Port Lawrence from their drama-filled trip to Seattle, with their parents presenting unrealistically happy scenes to them. Besides Lucas, who falls for his father's return from the dead, they all reject these sequences and reconvene to stop Kandu. In the end, the kids and Nathan are able to foil Kandu's plan, and he's dragged down to hell after a spell read by Margot. But before he's gone, he's transformed back into his soldier state, complete with his service revolver, and shoots Isaiah in the abdomen as a last act of defiance. Isaiah is left in the hospital dying when Margot declares love for him after he confessed his own feelings earlier. Tearfully, she decides to read the same spell that originally healed Kandu. Isaiah rises in his bed, and in the last scene, a distraught Nathan sees Kandu's reflection in a bathroom mirror. That's it! A double cliffhanger. A bit disappointed we didn't get to see some kind of actual horror land in the finale titled Welcome to Horror Land, but whatever. I suppose Kandu himself is somehow tied to the spell Margot read, but how it connects back to Mr. Bratt will have to be explained in the next season, if we get it. I actually really like the slappy Kandu Mahar backstory, it just felt like that should have been told over a longer period of time as a part of a separate string of episodes. Nathan's betrayal after being at the center of the previous ordeal was just too far of a stretch for me. Honestly, if anyone was going to go retrieve Slappy, it should have been Colin. He was the one at his wit's end with the whole mystery and was ignored by Nora and Ben. He's kind of portrayed as almost breaking a few times, so if he had enough and wanted answers for himself, I could have seen him being a better choice for Slappy's reintroduction. But they didn't go that way. By the end of the show, I think I actually liked Isaiah less, and seeing him and Margot admit their feelings for each other with James stirring the pot like a total dick right after the Lucas breakup just didn't work. I think Lucas is by far the most sympathetic character, and to see him and Margot break up so soon was another negative aspect of keeping the story going right away instead of waiting for a season two. Maybe the strategy was to give the audience more to sink their teeth into for future seasons, like the creative team wasn't confident enough with what they had in season one and decided to tell part of season two story in the last two episodes to get people excited and demand more from the series. 
They do try to weave this continuation into the story itself by Mr. Bratt attempting to write a more unpredictable ending for his book, but that theme doesn't really hold up that well. It wasn't just a more surprising and twisted finish to the story. It was an obvious showcase of where else they could go down the line, and it was ultimately unnecessary. Despite the uneven pacing and the unfortunate way it wrapped up the season, I still come down on the side of liking this show, just less than before. It has its annoying threads and strange story turns, but there was more good than bad in this series for me. Was it a worthwhile reboot, though? Did it justify its own existence? I think just barely. Now that the first season is done, I'd be interested to hear what you guys thought. I know there was a big split from older fans, but how do you feel about it now? Do you want another season, or should this series be left alone like Slappy should have been? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.